Everybody see that? All right, so that was a pretty good response right there. Three, two, one. Ooh, really good. How do you know if they're actually doing that themselves it's, or it's involuntary? Like, I have so, no control over what's happening right now. So it's just because we're stimulating that specific part of the brain that controls that hand. If a patient moves, it's usually before or after. Okay. Yeah. Um, as we've done it, you kind of learn because a patient, it clicks and then they go like this. So like, no, that was, <laughs> that was the patient. Um, it's just, you know, how much they're thinking about it. Yeah. You know, but a lot of times um, they're just nice and still. <laughs> they relax. We try to have them relax. There's usually a TV there uh, where the doctor's sitting, but uh, uh, we have just nice imagery and soft music going on so they can kind of focus on that while we're doing the mapping because to them it, it's not going to make a lot of sense with all our numbers that we're um, shouting out and um, yesing and knowing so it's kind of like a confusing um, time even though we uh, explain to them what we're doing um, we may ask them to squeeze their hand to prime their muscles to react if we're not getting a, a good uh, response out of the hand at like a higher power so this is, uh, this is a mid-power, so I'll just step on it again. That's, this is 50, so it's not that loud. I'm going to go all the way up to 80. And you can just hear it because it's stronger. Oh, Much yeah, louder. That's a big, okay. yeah, that's a big difference. Sam, what does that feel like when you move your hand? Um, it's hard to explain. It, 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 just, it just moves. Um, is it like a shock? No. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's not like an electrical stimulation. It's like a muscle twitch. I don't yeah. know if you ever have like a twitch. Yeah, it's like yeah. a twitch. Yeah. So it's almost like you're not feeling anything, just, just, the, just the movement mm -hmm. of your hand. Yeah. Oh, wow. The last time I got mapped, um, a couple of them, depending on the location, I didn't feel it. And then other times I, f I felt it like go to my fingers. Like a tingling um, or something? No, not even that. It was just, it's more just, it's like a twitch when you, your eyes start switching if you're overtired or something. Or, or just being aware that a part of your body is moving, moving. but not yeah. necessarily feeling pain. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. And again, if you're really focused in on it, that you may feel it more than um, maybe if you're off meditating or thinking about something else. So if you don't get a good response, you move it over a center? Yep, yeah, so let's say we didn't get anything there. I'm going to turn this back down because that would be way <laughs> too much for Sam. Thank you. Because 50 was actually... Uh, a good amount for her. We'd probably go down to 45 for her mapping, just because that was a really big, like, kind of whole hand twitch. And we really want to see make just a finger or a thumb movement. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, a location that we probably won't be seeing anything. So we're going off of the motor cortex. Here. So we're right about here. So I'm going to go uh, to, like, stimulate this area. Okay. We may see a face twitch. <laughs> That'll be it. Well, try not to laugh at you. That's no. okay. <laughs> Just when you thought it couldn't get any cuter, <laughs> my face is going to start doing weird things. You ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. So her wow. face twitched, her hand didn't move. We'll do it again. Oh, Three, wow. two, one. There you go. Oh, you got a nice, like, nice little nose <laughs> twitch there. A little blink, <laughs> too. Yeah. I get a nice uh, right face twitch. <laughs> a little bunny. So what we're, we're also stimulating um, not just the brain, but also the scalp and facial nerves and muscles. So um, that's why we do see some facial twitching as well, which is completely normal. Um, so once we find uh, the motor cortex strip, then we turn the power down by usually about 5%, and then we test again to see if we see any response. And now we're checking for the motor threshold, and that's the amount um, of power, the minimal amount of power to stimulate her brain. So my brain, her brain, your brain, probably we all have different motor thresholds and again it depends on if you're on medications if you're not um, how much sleep you got the night before if you had alcohol the night before um, so if you're drinking beer right now <laughs> your uh, um, your motor threshold could have changed from before you've taken the uh, well I wouldn't say first sip <laughs> but let's say this is your third one <laughs> you know, it's okay um, and that also changes the seizure risk for the patient so every day the technicians ask um, do you have any alcohol the night before? Do you have any caffeine this morning? How much? Um, any changes in medications? Did you take your meds as prescribed? Um, and how did you sleep the night before? Do you ask them to avoid alcohol and caffeine? And um, Yes. I mean, we prefer them not to uh, be drinking. Um, but some, some patients, um, they do. They might have two glasses of wine a night. As long as, as it's, they're honest with us mm -hmm. as possible. And we tell them. If you're lying to us, I mean, you're increasing your risk of seizure. Mm -hmm. um, when start, starting treatment, it's at a tenth of a percent, just like starting a new antidepressant. 
um, but in, if you change things, like you, didn't, you only got two hours of sleep or four hours of sleep, you usually get eight, and you're out.